guys, I'm Heather and welcome to my July wrap up. Today I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in July and whether or not I actually got through my TBR. So let's get started. The first book that I read was School Spirits by Rachel Hawkins. And this is kind of like a spin-off of the Hex Hall series. And luckily, other than a vague mention, you didn't actually have to read that one to read this one. So I read the first Hex Hall book like way back when it's published. And by the time the next one was published, I just kind of forgot about it and didn't get to any of the other ones. I might, I actually enjoyed School Spirits. I would have enjoyed it more if there had been more of them. When I looked it up, it said that it was a standalone book. However, it was clearly not meant to be a standalone book. There were at least two major plot threads that should have run through an entire series that just never went anywhere because there was only one book. So in this book, Izzy is like a hunter of magical stuff, like creatures, stuff like that. And for the first time ever, her assignment is to go to a high school where there are hauntings, I guess. And she falls in love. She makes friends. So for the first time, she actually wants to stay where she is instead of moving on to the next job. It's about that. And it could have been more if there had been a series. So the next book that I read was Daring in a Blue Dress by Katie McAllister. And it's a typical Katie McAllister book. She has basically the same characters in every book. So basically it's about an emotionally distant man who has some sort of traumatic experience. It's always to varying degrees. Sometimes it's not much, sometimes it's a lot. And then the quirky woman who wears him down, breaks down his walls, and they fall in love. That's what it's about. Basically, every female character she writes is the same, and every male character she writes is the same. So in this book, Alden Ainsley buys this old estate, and all this takes place in England, so think of like English manners kind of thing like that. And Mercy Starling is hired to work at a kind of medieval sword fighting kind of festival thing that's being held on the grounds of this estate unbeknownst to the new owner. There's a lot of, you know, quirky characters that are just preventing him from moving on with his plans to renovate this house and sell it. And everyone's kind of getting in his way, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's like a constant, like, stress for him. And in some ways, it's kind of funny. In some ways, you're kind of feeling the stress that he's feeling. Like, these people just refuse to get off your property kind of thing. So the weird thing about these books, and I think other books that she does are like this too. It's in first person from Mercy's point of view. But there are chapters that are from Alden's point of view that are in third person. So he's never in first person. Only Mercy is. But sometimes she's not even there. So sometimes the writing is in third person. Sometimes it's in first person. So... I think that's typical of her books, but I think it's kind of weird still. And this book kind of highlighted for me why I don't love reading her books that are not the dragons or the dark ones. And it's that nothing really happens. So at least nothing happened in this book at all for like half the book besides them developing their relationship. And I mean, great, you're developing your relationship. But other than the daily stresses, there is nothing going on. And then about halfway through, when the things start going on, 
it's so obvious right away what's going on, and I was completely right about what was going on. So that's why I don't love her non-paranormal ones, only because there's more action in those. Like there's some other stuff going on throughout the story besides the romance that makes it more interesting. So the next book I read was Body Movers by Stephanie Bond. This is a series and I believe it's actually still going on, maybe. I think it's got at least 10 books. I believe I currently have like five or six of them that I bought as a lot. Body Movers follows Carlotta Wren and her brother Wesley. Mostly it's from Carlotta's point of view. Some chapters are from Wesley's. Those ones weren't as exciting. So basically, Carlotta and her family used to be part of Atlanta's elite, but then her father does something. I, I don't think it was embezzlement. It was some other white collar crime. And right before he's prosecuted, he and their mother run off. So they abandon the kids. Carlotta's, I think, 18 and her brother's like nine. So there's quite an age difference. Carlotta has raised her brother. Now her brother's like 19 and he gets in trouble with the law and from there things kind of escalate so the body movers part of it is that one of the things wesley has to do after you know getting arrested is you know get a job pay back whatever like he owes the state and he gets a job as a body mover. So he works with this guy who transports bodies to the morgue. <laughs> and he has his own tragic backstory. And then there is the cop who arrested her brother, but has now been put back on the case to find out what happened to her parents and where they are. And then there is the guy she was engaged to at 18 who dumped her when her family scandal happened. In this particular one, there is a murder that happens and impacts someone close to her. And she does her own detective work to kind of find out who did it. It was weird, I think. The ultimate murder, what I thought was weird. I think in this it's not so much about that particular mystery, but the overarching plot of her parents that is more interesting. The murder itself was actually not that interesting, but I'm actually more interested to know what happened to her parents. So the thing is, is they have set up a possibility for three different love interests in this. Her ex-fiance, the cop, and the body mover guy. And other than the body mover guy, which actually has had less screen time than a lot of them, the other two are, you know, especially the cop. I mean... I can handle, you know, guys being jerks in books and still be okay with the kind of romance that develops, but there is a line and this guy's jerkiness crossed that line. I am going to be so mad if I continue this series and he actually ends up a love interest. It's just, it, it's not cute. He's, it's not a cute behavior. And then her ex-fiance, I don't know, maybe it's just, he just seems kind of weak. I don't know. So I'm hoping for the body mover guy. That's who we're rooting for. I don't know how much romance plays a part in this, but I know Stephanie Bond has other, like more romance sort of books. So if there is a romance, body mover, yay. So the next books I read were these two manga. It's the only two in this particular story. Uh, Kenka Bansha Otome uh, by Chie Shimada. So this manga series is based on a game called Kenka Bansha Otome. 
and it's a visual novel that was released on the Vita only in Japan. Unfortunately, because it's actually done by Spike Chunsoft, who does uh, Danganronpa, which I love. So I would have loved to play this one, but um, I suppose I could import it. But as it's a visual novel, there's a lot of dialogue and I don't speak Japanese. So unless I had it like translated or something, I wouldn't know what was going on. There is an anime, but uh, I tried watching the first episode, not so great. But in this manga duology, the main character is convinced to dress up as a boy to go to this all-boys school, basically for fighters. So the way the school hierarchy is, all that is who is the best fighter. They're constantly trying to fight each other to be on top. And her twin brother that she only just met is not into that. So they switch places. She goes to the school and makes friends for the first time in her life. The thing is that it could have been longer. And maybe the anime is, maybe the game is, but the manga is only two volumes. It ends well enough. But there were really some threads that they could have continued on into a full series and they just didn't. So I was left a little unsatisfied just because I felt like there could have been more and maybe there is in the anime or game, but not in this one. So the next book that I read was Stop Pretending What Happened When My Big Sister Went Crazy by Sonia Sones. This is poetry, basically. And I liked it well enough for the type of book that it is, which is not my style. I don't love this style of writing. Just not that into it. It took about an hour to read. It's really short, plus writing like that is really quick. And it follows a girl named Cookie whose sister has a breakdown. And how she deals with it over time. So it goes through, you know, the being embarrassed and not wanting to tell anyone, you know, being angry at her sister, being angry at her parents, all that kind of stuff, all the emotions that you would go through as you learn to deal with something like this that changes your family. And Apparently, in the like author's note, it's loosely based on her own experiences, which I thought was kind of interesting. So, I mean, it's an interesting book if you're interested in that kind of thing. It, it's really short, and it is in verse, which is not my favorite style, but still I liked it. Then I read Strange Legacies by Anne Barron, and this book is like, I think from 1969. So the writing actually is much different than the style of writing that we get today. It actually feels a lot more formal. And there were words in here that I don't know that I've ever seen used before. Having to look up a word now and then was really kind of interesting. That doesn't really happen to me. So in this book, Jan, and I think that's how you say her name. It's J-A-N-N-E. So I just kind of assumed it was Anne with a J. So that's what I called her, Jan. So Jan comes home to her family estate after the untimely, but um, not so unfortunate death of her abusive husband that she had only had for like six months or so. And when she comes back, she starts to feel that things in her family's home are not as happy as she remembered them and that they never actually had been. So this is kind of a family secrets sort of book. She recounts incidents from her past where she had accidents that may or may not have been accidents. And she starts thinking about 
the death of her mother years before and whether or not that was actually a suicide or if it had been something else. So this book got strange in like the way that relationships worked, but it, I mean, it was interesting. I don't think I'd ever read it again, but I did think it was an interesting book. Uh, the writing style was a lot different than I'm used to, and it actually took a bit longer to read for something so short. So those were the books that I had on my TBR. The next two books from my TBR I actually did not finish. And the first one was Dead Girls by Richard Calder. And the second one was this Chinese reader. And I feel bad about this one. I am such a bad student. And I really need to try to get these done because my class should be starting sometime again soon. And I've done nothing over the summer for it. But I actually did not finish Dead Girls because of the reading rush. If I didn't have that, I would have finished this easily. I had about like maybe like 13 days to finish this, but I did the reading rush instead. So I will link the reading rush wrap up down below, but I'll quickly go through the things that I read for it just to add them in. <laughs> So I did read the first two volumes of Paradise Kiss by Ayazawa, and this is one that I read a long time ago. I really do like it, and I might actually read the other three volumes if I can get to it this month on top of all the stuff that I've already got planned. Then I read Gingerbread by Rachel Cohn. This is another one that I read a long time ago. And I didn't like this one as much as I did the first time I read it, but it was still pretty good. Then I read My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I didn't like this one so much. It just was weird, I guess. I didn't love the way the plot developed, even though I did like the writing. So I might try out a different one. Then I read Nightwalker by Jocelyn Drake, and I read Didn't I Say to Make My Abilities Average in the Next Life by Funna, and the one that I don't have here with me is uh, Fairy Tales in Electric City by Francesca Leah Block. So those are the books that I read for The Reading Rush. I do have a wrap up, so I will link it below. So you can see what I thought of those books there. But that is it for this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.